Today I'm going to take the coil I wound in my very first video and use it to build a tabletop bipolar Tesla coil. This kind of Tesla coil doesn't need an earth ground, and the one I built is small enough that you can touch it safely, so it's a good tabletop toy. The system is powered from a 110 volt outlet. The hotline goes into a capacitor that serves as a current limiter, and from there it goes to a dimmer switch to allow for power adjustments. The output of the dimmer switch feeds into an ignition coil, which is what produces the high voltage, about 30,000 volts. Then the high voltage comes out as AC, so it has to go through a bridge rectifier to turn it into DC. At this point, you have a very simple high voltage supply that can be built for about $30. For the Tesla coil, the high voltage DC is fed into a pair of capacitors that I rolled by hand from aluminum foil and polyethylene film. Once the caps charge to high enough voltage, they discharge through the spark gap, and the current pulse travels through the primary side of the Tesla coil. I'm just going to solder everything up real quick and give it a test. That's exactly what I wanted to see and the capacitor is doing its job to limit the power to about 30 watts. I 3D printed a spool for the primary coil and the secondary coil sits inside it. The printed caps are what the electrode arms will attach to. These legs are standoffs for the coil so that it sits a safe distance away from whatever surface it's on. Next I'm going to use some quarter inch copper tubing to form the arms for the coil electrodes. A little bit of aluminum tape will help ensure there's good contact with the electrode arm. Each leg of the bridge rectifier is built up of eight 5,000 volt diodes in series, giving it a total rating of 40,000 volts. The rectifier needs to be potted in wax so that the legs don't arc over to each other, so I placed it in a printed mold and poured candle wax in, which I melted with a small blowtorch. Wax is about 10 to 15 times better than air for electrical insulation, so this should be more than enough. Now my high voltage output is DC, and I don't see any diodes blowing up. So far so good. Now I need to make the high voltage capacitors. I use 6mm polyethylene film as a dielectric and cheap aluminum foil from a dollar store. Everything is stuck together with spray adhesive, and I try as much as possible to work out the air bubbles. I found that one of these sheets can only handle about 15,000 volts, and I have about 30,000 volts, so I use three sheets just to be safe. Normally when people make high voltage capacitors like this, they roll them up into round cylinders, but I found that it's actually a lot easier to just fold them over really tight. I wound up with about 2.5 nanofarads, so I made two of these. It's hard to tell from the video, but when I run the supply with these caps, the arcs are way brighter and louder. This is because the energy is being bottled up and then suddenly released instead of just flowing continuously. The last step is to make the box that houses all of my electronics look nice, and then I can mount the coil itself. This definitely came out looking pretty good, but let's see how well it works.
The coil doesn't create very big arcs, but the fact that they're low-powered and high-frequency means that you can touch them without getting hurt, which was exactly what I wanted. 